Working with SharePoint is one of these things that feels really hard if you haven't done it before. You might be thinking, I need to code, I need to know CSS, Power Apps, and other complex stuff. It's actually so much easier these days. Today I'll show you all the basics you need to know to create visually appealing SharePoint pages and communication sites. We'll cover how to create SharePoint pages and news, how to change the look and feel of your site, how to upload files, and even talk about permissions, version history, and creating SharePoint sites from scratch. At the end of this tutorial, we'll get a SharePoint landing page that looks something like this, completely out of the box. All right, let's go. So when do you usually need a new SharePoint page? You need a new SharePoint page anytime you want to post news or make a landing page. For example, a landing page for a department. So let's say you need to make a SharePoint landing page for employee onboarding. Where do you start? First, log in to your SharePoint site. Your company IT will give you URL of where to log in, and it usually looks something like this. If you haven't received a URL like that, you might need to ask your IT to create a SharePoint site for you. We even included steps on how to create a site in the appendix of this video. So if you don't have an existing SharePoint site, you can click right into the part from the video chapters below. Otherwise, stay tuned as in the next few minutes, we're going to create some SharePoint pages. First, let's go to our site URL. This is where we're going to create our employee onboarding page. Now let's go ahead and create our page by clicking on plus new button, then select page, pick blank option, and click the create page button. If you don't see a plus new button, be sure to ask IT to give you edit rights to the site. Now you have a new page in front of you and you can add and customize it to your liking. First, let's give this page a name by clicking the page icon. I'll call my page New Employee Onboarding. Next, I'll just remove everything from this page to start fresh. So what do we have here? Each SharePoint page is made from sections. This is what you see here. Sections are like shelves where you can put your things on. They each come in their own size, so choose the kind of section you want and add it to your page. For my page, I want to have background image at the top. So I'll add a one column section here and then I'll go to section settings and click add background button to pick my image. You can even click more settings to adjust your image. For my image, I'll set a dark gradient filter so the image is not so intense and slightly move the focus point like this. Good start. And this is how you add a background to your section. So if sections are kind of like rooms in the house and the backgrounds are like painted walls, what we're missing here is some furniture. And in SharePoint, the furniture is the web parts. What are web parts? Web parts are the real deal. They're bringing the functionality to the section. Each web part comes with its own capabilities and makes it possible to add text, links, videos, and many other elements that make a page useful. You can add as many web parts to the page as you want to make any design you want. That's what we'll do here. I'll start with the text web part to welcome new employees to my page. I'll make my text a bit bigger, bolder, and centered. Let's also add a bit of space here. I'll click the plus icon and select the spacer web part. Now let's also add a button to take employees to an onboarding portal with various onboarding tasks and trainings. Here's how you give a label to a button and set a link for when this button is clicked. Do you see how our SharePoint design starts looking more and more like a website? Good progress. Now, before we keep on making this page beautiful, let me show you something cool. You might have noticed as I am adding web parts to the page, the page is automatically saved. So you're not going to lose anything if you step away. Also, you can click undo if you make a mistake and want to go back. You can even return to an older version from days and weeks ago by going to page details and scrolling down to version history. Here you can find previous and auto-saved versions of the page and see exactly what changed and go back to that older version. 
To bring back that older version, select the version you like from the list, click to it here, and select Restore. This versioning feature is especially useful when you have multiple people working on the page at once. Microsoft calls it co-authoring. You can tell when someone else is editing this page if you see their name next to the edit button like this. You can see the changes they're making on the page in real time. And if you missed anything, the version history will tell you exactly when and who changed what. Very cool. Now let's go back and continue with our employee onboarding page. We've got the welcome part. Now let's add some useful resources. For that, let's add a new section below the banner, open the list of web parts, and look for the Quick Links web part. This web part lets you have buttons with links to various things. There are different styles you can choose from for your links. I'll go with the film strip style because it looks clean and visual. From here, to add a new link, just click on the blank card, add a URL of where you want the link to go, and hit Add. You can always go back and change anything by clicking this right-hand panel next to a link. Okay, I'll add the link to Employee Handbook first. To add an image, I click Custom Image and then click Change. Here you can upload your own image or choose one from the stock library. I'll upload my custom image to match my branding. And just like that, we've added our first quick link. It's fast, easy, and looks great. Now let's do the same for a few more links. Training resources, staff directory, and company culture. And these are my top links for the new employee onboarding. So far so good. Let's now help new employees find some other common resources. Things like welcome letter from CEO, onboarding roadmap, onboarding checklist, and so on. For that, I'll click plus button to add a new web part and look for document library. Now, this web part will ask me which library I want to show files from. In SharePoint, each communication site already comes with some pre-created libraries. I'll pick this one called Documents. And of course, there are no files here yet. Easy fix. Just select the files you want to upload from your computer and drag and drop them over this folder like this. Now your files are uploaded to the SharePoint library and everyone who has access to the site will also see these files. As you can see, the uploaded folders here have all kinds of documents, but the documents we want to see are the ones from employee onboarding. So let's make this document library to show files only from employee onboarding folder. Let's also make this library look cleaner by hiding this command bar here. Perfect. So this was the document library, one of the most used web parts in SharePoint. Another popular web part on SharePoint is the news web part. The news web part is perfect for posting announcements, employee spotlights, leadership updates, and so on. For our onboarding page, we'll use the news web part to introduce new employees. It's a fantastic way to welcome new employees to the team and share a word or two about them. As always, we'll click the plus icon and this time look for the news web part. I'll go to web part settings and change the title here to meet our new team members. The list is empty, so let's add a few new welcomes here. For the Add button to become active, I first need to publish my page. I click Publish here. And now we can click the Add News button. When I click it, I get to select a news page template. I'm going to pick a blank template like before and give this post a title like this. Welcome Mark Wood to our team. Now, this should feel familiar, because if I click plus icon, I'll see similar web parts I saw on our onboarding page. I'll just add a text web part and write a quick intro to welcome Mark to the team. Let's also add Mark's photo so others can recognize him when they see him. Perfect. I'm also going to change the banner's image to this festive confetti. I also want Mark's photo to show up on the onboarding page welcome feed. And to do that, I'll click on Page Details, 
and upload Mark's photo as a thumbnail. This page is good to go. Unlike the onboarding page, you see how the publish button here says post and send? This is because news pages can be optionally sent via email to a group of employees as alerts or newsletters. I don't know if I want to use it for my welcomes, but let me show you how this email will look like when employees receive it. This can be a powerful feature and save you time for creating a newsletter. Here's one more pro tip. If you're planning to use email newsletter feature, be sure that the web parts you're adding to the news page are email friendly. In fact, there is a filter in your web part list called made for email. You can use quick links, videos, maps, or people's contacts. So you have lots of options here. Now let's come back to our onboarding page and see what we've got so far. Our welcomes web part is no longer empty. It has Mark's picture and quick bio here. Let me add one more post here following the same process to give this section a realistic view. Now, what's bothering me about this view is how there are so many irrelevant details here. They distract me from the bio. Let's clean this up. I'll edit this page again and go to the web part settings. There are a lot of options here, like the source where your news come from, the layout options, but that's not what I want to change. I'm looking to hide the views, author name, the date, much better. I can finally see enough text to fully display our short bios. This page is looking good so far, but you know what's missing? Contact names of HR team so employees can follow up with questions if they can't find something. For that, you can use the people web part. Let's add the people web part and call the section meet your onboarding team. From here, it's super easy to add people. You just type the name of the person from your organization and when you publish this page, their contact information will be visible to everyone on a hover, like this. You can even give more details to each profile to help employees know who to contact for what. For that, go to edit mode, click on layout options and select a medium layout. Now we have some extra space to give more details like this. Let me add a few more onboarding team members to this web part. Perfect. Now I'm going to wrap up this page by adding a gradient background to our contact cards and two more beautiful backgrounds to the next few sections. Now let's publish this page to see what we've got so far. And look at this beautiful page. New employees will love to work for this company. But wait a minute. I don't see any company logo here. What is this place? I think we need to give this site a splash of personality. Let's go to a gear icon, click change the look, and from there we can change our top bar. First, let's select our theme colors. I'll click customize and choose black as my main color and green as an accent color. Click save, looking pretty good. Let's make the navigation a bit more prominent now. We can go back to settings, click header, and from here we can choose the layout and the color of our navigation. I'll choose compact layout, black background, and make sure my site title visibility is off because I'll use my logo as a site title. To upload our company logo, I'll click change and select the logo I want to show at the top of my navigation. That's it. Our navigation is almost good to go. You can change the links showing up in the navigation here. Just click edit and go to the three dots next to each navigation item to either edit or remove the item. You can also add a new link here by clicking on that plus icon. All you need to do is give it a URL and the title. I'm going to cancel and go back to my page. Now here's a pro tip. People usually click on the logo when they want to go back to the main page. In our case, when we click on the logo, it takes me to the blank page. That's not what we want. Let me show you how to fix that so it goes to the page we just built. Click on the gear icon and go to site contents. Then click on site pages. 
and you'll see the list of pages we have on this side. To select the page we've created earlier as a home page for this site, you'll navigate to the three dots next to it and select Make Home Page. And the next time you'll click on the navigation logo, our onboarding page is the page you'll see. Here's another cool trick that will save you hours. Imagine you just made a page for onboarding, like we just did. And now you want to make a new page for learning and development. You probably need new content for learning and development page, but you might also want to use the same look for everything else. You can easily copy your onboarding page from here, saving you tons of time. Pick the page you want to copy and click Copy To. Then click Copy Here. And when you see the window asking you about the file name, select Keep Both. You see, now you have a copy of our page in seconds. Now, let's just rename it and you can edit it just like any other page. Now that we have built our onboarding and maybe a few other pages, when you're ready to share them with the rest of the company, how do you do that? If you see site access link, like the one I have here, this means that you have necessary rights to share the site. Simply click site access and select a few people you want to share the site with and click share. If you're ready to share the site with everyone in the company, simply type everyone except external users and select read so that nobody can change the page and only read the page. I also recommend unchecking the send email checkbox so no one is blasted with the automated email when you share the page with them. The automated email can confuse users. Click the share button to finish. Now I have a bonus for you. I want to show you how I took this onboarding page and turned it into a beautiful and interactive page like this. This page looks so good, it doesn't even look like SharePoint. Every day we have people come to us and say they spent months watching SharePoint tutorials and their site still doesn't look like a website. The thing is, there is no problems with their design skills. It's just SharePoint has certain design limitations that you just can't go around. And that's why our clients use Origami. Origami is a paid plugin to SharePoint that comes with dozens of ready-made web parts that plug right on top of SharePoint, extending what it can look like. For example, here I used Origami header web part to create a bold personalized welcome, greeting each employee by their name. This is something you can do in a vanilla SharePoint. So is having bold navigation and buttons that allow you to apply any color or gradient you like. You can have quick links of any shape, color, and size, and have a document one-stop shop that not only shows the files from the document library, but also allows you to combine multiple libraries into one and search within them using a search box. And remember how we had those static employee bios? Well, now we can interact with our new colleagues in the comment section and like the posts. And if you scroll down, you can see that our contact cards are also more colorful and interactive. But that's not all because Origami has over 30 more features. For example, here I added the social feed widget to share company's LinkedIn and YouTube posts all in a single feed using origami script embed web part. But this is just an example. You can have any script you want. If you like the design I showed you here and you want to see more examples like this one, check out our latest video on YouTube and see design examples in the link below. At the very least, you'll get some ideas and see if you want the same results. Now, let's move on to the appendix section of this video and talk about the things we've skipped at the beginning. This is the appendix section of this video. Here, I'll show you how to create a SharePoint site if you don't have one already. What is a SharePoint site? A SharePoint site holds all the pages together. Your IT might have given you a URL of the site already. It looks similar to this. If you don't have a site, you can create one as long as you have SharePoint admin permissions. To check if you have correct permissions to create a site, go to your SharePoint start page by clicking on these dots and selecting SharePoint. 
Then see if you have a button called plus create site. If you do, you've got correct permissions. Otherwise, you'll need to log in as a SharePoint administrator. Click the plus create site button to begin. You will be given an option to select a communication or a team site. Communication sites are designed to share information with the entire company. You can share news, events, KPIs, forms, and other resources that lots of people will access. Communication sites can be set up so that everyone can view content on them and only a handful of people can be authors and moderators. Team sites are more private and are used for team or project work with a handful of members. Unlike comm sites, everyone on the team site can edit documents, but you can set exceptions. We will use the communication site option here because my employee onboarding page will communicate information to everyone in my company and not just a small team. Next, you get to pick a template for your new SharePoint site. I always pick blank template because I like to create my pages from scratch. Okay, now click use template, give the site a name, click next, and create site. Now the last bit, let's make sure that the correct users can access our site. I click site access here to see who has what kind of access to the site. Users listed under full control will be able to administer the site and give away permissions to others. Then we have editors who can edit pages and readers can view pages. Be sure to give edit permissions to people who will be creating and updating pages. So that was a SharePoint tutorial for beginners. Now you know all the basics you need to know to create SharePoint pages and work with communication sites. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.